Everybody happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight. What a great time we had in the Holy Ghost last night. Many lives were touched. Are you thankful for that? Jesus' name. Jesus' name. As I did not do so last night, I would just like to say that I give honor to your pastor and his family. Do you love your pastor? Amen. Very, very thankful for their hospitality. I am just thrilled to be here with all of you. This area of the world is so beautiful. I've never been up here before. This is my first time. So uh, today I was able to take a little trip around and looked at, um, I don't know how many lakes we saw, but it was more than two. Amen. And uh, walked out onto one of the piers and looked down and you could see straight down 15 feet. And uh, so I started to take off my shoes and my hat and uh, was just going to jump in, but I figured I better not do that because I had to get back in Pastor's car. <laughs> and, and, uh, I appreciate that too much, but I'm very, very thankful to be here. Amen. Did you come tonight expecting the Lord to yeah. do something yeah. great? Yeah. Amen. 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 I want to talk to us a little bit tonight. Uh, you can title it whatever you want to, whether it's being apostolic or maybe rather apostolic response. That's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Would you lift up your hands and your voice? And would you begin to ask the Lord to open your spirit to receive the word tonight? Jesus, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace that's in this house tonight. Jesus, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to open up our spirits and our hearts. Would you just begin to extend your faith in the house tonight? Maybe you feel like praying in the Holy Ghost. Let's create an atmosphere where the Lord can begin to move. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Someone said in Jesus' name. You greet somebody that you haven't talked to yet. Let them know how happy you are to see them in the house of the Lord. Greet them. Let them know how good they look in their suit and tie and their beautiful dress. Amen. You can be seated once you've done that in the presence of the Lord. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you're seated, let's give the Lord another great hand clap of praise in the house. All right. Jesus' name. Well, I think I got it on. Is it on? Okay, maybe not. Can I preach without it tonight? Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Let's give the Lord one more great hand clap of praise. you to know in the house tonight that there are several things that separates the apostolic church from any other. Are you happy to be an apostolic tonight? Yes. Amen. And what the word apostolic means, it's that we believe in the apostles' doctrine. When Peter yes. said in Acts chapter 2 that we must repent of our sins, be yes. baptized in the name of Jesus yes. and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes through the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's why we call ourselves apostolic Pentecostals. Yeah. Is because this is the same thing that happened on the day of Pentecost. Someone shout, I'm an apostolic. I'm an apostolic. Amen. We are filled with the whole truth. Can I tell you that every step of salvation is not optional, but these things are essential. Yeah. That word essential keeps coming up over and over through the midst of COVID, what is essential? Can I tell you tonight that the church is essential? Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you that the church is essential? Can I tell you tonight that the Holy Ghost is essential? Yeah. My God, the Holy Ghost is essential. Yeah. And I want to tell you that as we talked about tonight, I, I just want to begin maybe to talk to you and begin to break down a few different things that we talked about in yesterday's services. For Acts 
chapter uh, 1 and verse number 8 says, But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. One thing that separates the apostolic church is that we walk in power and in demonstration. Someone shout power. Power. Shout demonstration. Demonstration. Amen. Can I tell you tonight, church, that if you have the Holy Ghost, that you have more power than you understand. Amen. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have more power than you understand. For the Lord said that all power is given unto Him in heaven and in earth. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, you too are filled with that power. Someone shout power. Power. Acts chapter 3 begins to tell us, Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer. And as they began to come up, they saw that there was a man that sat at the gate that was unable to get on his feet. And, and he began to ask of them alms. And Peter looked at him and he said, Silver and gold I don't have, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get up. And the man was healed that self same hour. Now, I would begin to tell you tonight that the Word tells us that believers can lay hands on the sick and they could recover. Amen. They... They shall recover. Amen. Amen. That word shall means not that it could happen, but that the Lord said that that power is given unto you tonight. Let me just tell you tonight that I believe that every service that we come in the doors of the church, that somebody can leave healed. Yes. Somebody can leave whole. Yes. Somebody yes. can leave delivered. Yes. Amen. And if we're going to be apostolic, then we must see the demonstration of the power of God. I don't want to just come into the house of God and walk out of here the same way that I came. Yes. But can I tell you tonight uh, that every time we get together, uh, I want to see somebody change. Uh, I want to see somebody different. Uh, I want to see somebody brought out of what they're going through. I want to see him filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you want to see it happen? Amen. Do you want to see it happen? Amen. The word of the Lord said that Jesus sent the disciples out two by two. Can I tell you that one thing in the apostolic church is there is no room for the spirit of competition. Can I tell you that I don't compete with you and you don't compete with me and you don't compete with you and he doesn't compete with her and her, she doesn't compete with, but can I tell you that when we're really apostolic uh, that the spirit of competition will fall to the wayside uh, and you'll understand that the reason uh, that I don't compete is that when I lay hands on the sick that it's not me that does the miracle, but rather it's the Lord that does the miracle. Amen. Pride and faith can't dwell together. Faith and fear don't dwell together. But can I tell you tonight that I believe that you don't have to be a preacher, you don't have to be a prophet, you don't have to be an apostle, but rather if you are a believer, you can see a move of the Holy Ghost begin to happen. Amen. If you are a believer, you can see a move of the Holy Ghost uh, begin to happen. Uh, let me just tell you this, that, that, that one of the greatest miracles I ever saw didn't happen uh, at the hands of a preacher, but rather I was at a conference up in Chicago, uh, or rather from here it wouldn't be up, it would be down. Amen. Not Chicago, Canada, Chicago, Illinois. I don't even think there is a Chicago, Canada. Thank you. Lord. But one of the greatest miracles I ever saw was this. As I was in this conference, we began to preach and, and the Holy Ghost began to fall in. And there were dozens of people that were filled with the Holy Ghost for the very first time. Amen. Amen. And in this conference, this man had a daughter that had never been able to hear it. And the man picked up his daughter and began to fight his way down to the front as he began to push past people. And as he carried this eight-year-old girl up above his head, and uh, as I was in the front, I turned back and I saw him begin to fight through the crowd. And I went down to where he was and I said, sir, I can tell that you need a miracle tonight. Uh, what's going on? And he said, brother, the Lord told me that if I would get through the crowd, uh, 
and get down to the front that God would heal my daughter tonight. Uh, let me tell you, I begin to tell him, sir, uh, can I tell you that there was a woman in the scripture uh, that had been to every doctor. Uh, and just like you are tonight, the woman began to fight through the crowd uh, because she knew if she would just touch uh, the hem of his garment uh, that she would be made whole. Uh, and the word said that when she got to Jesus, uh, that she touched the hem of his garment uh, and she was instantly uh, made whole. Uh, sir, let me tell you tonight uh, that the Lord will make your daughter whole this evening. Uh, you Maybe you're sitting in here and you would say, how would you possibly say something like that? Uh, how can you be sure that God would do it? Uh, I'm sure that the Lord will do it uh, because the word said that we're two or three are gathered together, that there will he be in the midst of them. Uh, it said that we shall lay hands on the sick uh, and they shall recover. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise for that power. I tell you that the man fought down to the front as he lifted up the eight-year-old girl's arms. I laid my hands on her and I began to pray. And I began to speak, Lord, heal this girl right now in the name of Jesus. And the word of the Lord began to come to me. And he said, no, this work I'm going to do through the hands of somebody that they're not expecting. Can I tell you that it would be easy for you tonight that if you want to see something happen, that you might go get the preacher or you might go get the pastor but can I tell you that what God wants to do, uh, He doesn't just want me to be apostolic. Uh, he doesn't just want Pastor to be apostolic. Uh, but God wants you to be apostolic. He wants you to be apostolic. I said, Lord, who are you going to do it through? He said, somebody that they're not expecting. I looked back in the crowd and saw a 13-year-old boy. I said, buddy, come up here. Uh, he ran down to the front. I said, man, do you believe that God can do a miracle through you? He said, yes, sir, I do. I said, then I want you to lay your hands on this 8-year-old girl, uh, and there will be a miracle happen tonight. Uh, he began to lay his hands on his ears uh, as he began to pray. Uh, he began to call on the name of Jesus. Uh, that the healing virtue of the Lord uh, to begin to flow through it. But he didn't stop there. She had hearing aids and he reached up and he grabbed her hearing aids and said, we're going to take these out. Uh, as he began to take them out, there's adults in the house uh, that you would say, why would you do that? Because there's a dimension that is beyond faith. Uh, it's the dimension of expectancy uh, when you're expecting God to do the Lord. Amen. He grabbed the hearing aids and took them out of her ears uh, as he laid hands on her ears. Uh, he said, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, be made whole. Uh, the little girl began to stumble backwards uh, because she was so young uh, that she didn't understand uh, why things began to be so loud around her. Uh, because the Lord uh, began to open up her ears. Uh, people, they've got faith in the preacher, but they don't have faith in God. My God, help me tonight. If you've got faith in God, then you believe that the word means what it says. You wouldn't wait on another altar call. You wouldn't wait on another service. You wouldn't wait on another evangelist. You say, I've got to see a breakthrough, and I've got to see it right now. happens uh, when the Holy Ghost begins to move. Uh, I was standing on a basketball court one night. Uh, a man went up for a shot and he came down on the side of his ankle. Uh, the bones were completely broken in half. Uh, as people began to go all around, uh, one yelled, go get the car. We got to take him to the hospital. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, church, what God wants to do, uh, Jesus ought to be your first response, uh, not your second. 
said, hang on a second. Uh, don't we preach that God can heal people? Uh, he said, lay hands on my ankle uh, and God will heal me right now. My God, have mercy. Let me tell you, uh, I cannot have faith for you, uh, but you've got to have faith to believe uh, that God is able. Not on a Sunday night, not in a revival service, not with a prophet, but with a bunch of sweaty dudes on a basketball court. We dropped down in the middle of the ground. I put my hands on his ankles. I said, right now in the name of Jesus, be made whole. The ankle bones came back together. I've got faith to believe it tonight uh, that if you walked in this building uh, and you need a miracle uh, that the miracle will come to you tonight. Uh, I wish somebody that walked in the building uh, and you're carrying a weight uh, that you'd begin to proclaim it. Uh, I'm going to see a miracle. Uh, that's what the boy said. Uh, Pray for me uh, and it'll happen. Uh, that's what the centurion said. Uh, speak the word uh, and it'll happen. Uh, there's power in your spoken word. Uh, the power of life uh, is in your tongue. It's in your tongue. That's why last Wednesday, a couple weeks ago, about a week and a half ago, my aunt was diagnosed. The doctor said we found a three-inch tumor in your ovaries, and we're positive that it's cancer. They began to run tests and said, if this is cancer, then you know what this means. There's a big surgery that's got to be done. Wednesday night, I was passing through home on my way up here. I went up to the church, and they said, let anyone that's sick come down to the front, for that's what the word says, that let they that are sick come down and the elders will lay hands upon them. Uh, that word means that believers will lay hands yeah, upon them. Uh, yeah. She came down to the front. Uh, I went over to her and I put my hand on her head. Uh, can I tell you that that's biblical as well? Uh, that the reason that we lay our hands on, on their head uh, is we are taking authority over what is going on. Uh, let me tell you, I still believe uh, that we need to lay hands on the sick. Help me somebody. Can I get a witness in the house? I went over to her and I laid my hand on her head. I said, by the authority of the word of God, the power that's in the name of Jesus, be made whole right now. I said, Becky, when you go into the doctor, I'm going to tell you that when they take the tumor out, they will speak to you that there is no cancer in your body. Let me tell you what happened. Yesterday they went in. They did the surgery. They removed the tumor. They said there is no cancer. But how did you know it would happen? Well, I know it'll happen because I've got expectancy. Uh, and let me tell you, uh, I'm not worried about what you think about me. Uh, I'm not worried about what the people down the road think of me. Uh, you might think I'm crazy. Uh, maybe I am a little bit crazy uh, because I believe that God wants to do a miracle. But what if you pray it and it doesn't happen? Well, let me tell you, if you take the credit when it does not happen, uh, then you'll also take the credit when it does happen. Uh, God's not going to share the credit with anyone. Uh, that's why I walk down and lay my hand on your head right now. Uh, and I'll begin to speak a word of faith uh, because it's the Lord that does the miracle. Uh, church, let me tell you, uh, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and you begin to speak in faith, uh, God will honor the words that you're speaking. God will honor. You can shake your head if you want to. God will honor the yeah. words that you're speaking. Uh, let's try it right now. Who in here needs a miracle? I want you to lift up your hand. You came in here needing a miracle. Stand to your feet over there. Stand to your feet in the back. Who came in here needing a miracle? Go ahead and stand up. It's all right. Who else came in here tonight and you need a miracle? Nobody else? All right. Could you turn around and just put your hand on her head, right on her head right now? And I want you to begin to pray in faith, believing that the Lord would do a miracle. And ma'am, if you believe it tonight, God's going to heal your body. Turn and lay your hand on her right now by the authority of the Word of God. By the power that's in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command your body to be healed. I command strength to fill you. Lord, you said in your Word that you would do this work by your stripes. 
Someone shout, I'm a believer. believer. Let me just tell you, about a year ago, my mother was diagnosed with cancer, triple negative carcinoma. The doctor told her that it's this kind of cancer that will come back over and over until one day that it could very much uh, maybe come back and it would take her life. Uh, But the Lord spoke a word to me uh, the day that she called and she FaceTimed. Uh, She said, Gentry, uh, the doctor said that it's cancer. Uh, I begin to sit underneath a tree uh, over at a pastor's house. Uh, As I begin to question God, I said, Lord, uh, what are you doing? Uh, And the Lord said, Gentry, uh, what's bigger, me or cancer? Amen. Amen. It's really just that simple. What's bigger, me or cancer? I said, Lord, you are bigger. Uh, He said, this is the beginning of a miracle. Uh, I said, Lord, I need more of a word. Uh, He said, you're not getting any more of a word. Uh, I said that this is the beginning of a miracle. Uh, Let me tell you what's happened. Uh, My mother is now on the final forms of pill form chemo. Uh, She had been through the chemo where they put it into your body. Uh, She's been through every kind of treatment. Uh, The doctor came back and said, Annette, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, He said, but we're expecting you uh, to make a full recovery. Uh, That's the kind of God I serve. go to a dead church. Can I get a witness? I don't want to go to a washed up church. Can I get a witness? I don't want to go to a dry church. But I want to go to a church that sees the power of God flow in every service. The Bible talks to us about it. That when the disciples were sent out after they're filled with the Holy Ghost, that they walked in power. That they walked in demonstration. That they walked in breakthrough. Uh, Let me tell you, uh, I've seen people that were possessed of spirits. Uh, I've seen them come in the house of God. Uh, I saw a man when I was in Nairobi, Kenya, walked into a red hot revival. Uh, He said, I need baptized. Uh, You mean to tell me you baptized a drunk person? Uh, Hey, let me tell you, uh, that was probably the best drunk decision he made all day. Uh-huh. Yeah, we we laugh about it because it's real funny. Uh, but the man went down in the name of Jesus. Uh, he came out of the water sober. Uh, he received the gift. to believe. I'm not worried when I preach it. And you say, well, I doubt it. Let me tell you, the word said, according to your faith, be it unto yes. you. you. Yes. Say, my faith. My say, my, say, my faith. My faith. My miracle. My faith. My breakthrough. My faith. 
my faith, my miracle. My miracle. Let me tell you tonight, uh, I can preach to you about it. Uh, I can yell, I can spit, I can stomp, I can, I can do whatever I want to do. Uh, but this is what the Word said, uh, that they went out expecting the miracle to happen. Uh, the Lord began to speak to me last night. Uh, I said, God, what do you want to do in this revival? Uh, he said, I want this church uh, to be more apostolic than they've ever been before. I want them to be apostolic in their worship. I want them to be apostolic in their response. He said that I want them to be apostolic in their expectancy. Let me tell you. This is what the Lord wants to do tonight. Uh, he wants you to be so apostolic in your expectancy. Uh, you know what I asked the Lord? I said, God, uh, what was so powerful about the day of Pentecost? Uh, he said they gathered together uh, and they began to pray. Yeah. Hallelujah. Said, all right, what else? He said, not a thing. They gathered together and they started to pray. He said, you see, I already told them that they would be filled with uh, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, he said, but what was powerful is they prayed not for five minutes, not for ten minutes, not for thirty minutes, not for. He said they prayed until something happened. Let me tell you, if you came in this building tonight and you would begin to pray until you felt something happen, there would be a release of the Holy Ghost. There would be a release of the Holy Ghost that would come over this church. There would be a release that would come over your family. There would be a release. Let me tell you. I've heard a lot of people say it. Uh, there's a reason that we pray like we do. Can I get a witness? There's a reason that we worship like we do. Can I get a witness? Let me tell you. This world wants what you've got. When a guest comes in, there's a reason that they came to an apostolic church. Uh, because they want to see an apostolic move of the Holy Ghost. They want what you've got. They want the breakthrough that you talk about. They want the experience that you talk about. Uh, we need to be unapologetically apostolic. We need to be unapologetically. Let me tell you. I've had the Lord send me all the way to different places. I was at one place in Ohio one time. I walked into the hotel and the lady said, how are you? And the Lord said, I've sent you here for her. I said, ma'am, I'm doing great. I'm here to preach at a church. She said, what church? I told her about the church. She said, what kind of church is it? I said, it's apostolic. She said, what does it mean? The Lord began to open up a door. I taught her a Bible study. I said, ma'am, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you that a move of the Holy Ghost. It can't wait on the confines that we try to put it in. Let me tell you what. This is what I believe in this church tonight. Uh, I believe that people are going to walk out of here. Uh, the miracles in the book of Acts, uh, it didn't happen in a building. Uh, it didn't happen uh, within four walls. Uh, it didn't happen after. Uh, it happened on the streets. Uh, it happened on the highways. Uh, it'll happen in the box. It'll happen in the supermarket. Let me tell you. I've seen people filled uh, in tent meetings. Uh, I've seen people filled uh, in supermarkets. Uh, <laughs> I've seen people filled on basketball courts. Uh, but let me tell you what I believe that God wants to do. Uh, God is about to empower some people. Uh, what I'm trying to preach to you tonight uh, is I'm trying to preach to you about what it means to be apostolic. Uh, when you're not worried about other people. Uh, when you're not worried about what you've been through. Uh, but what you're worried about is what do I do uh, with what I've got. Uh, let me tell you tonight uh, that God has baptized you with the Holy Ghost. Uh, God has baptized ties you with power. Uh, but what God is waiting on, uh, let me just put it real frank. Uh, what you need is not another revival service. Uh, you need to be determined enough uh, to do something with what you've got. You need to be determined to do something with what you've got. Now let me tell you, I prayed over this meeting. 
I've fasted over this meeting. I've sought the face of God over this meeting. But this is what the Lord told me. He said, I've got a revival that's hovering above them. He said, and I'm ready to release harvest. I'm ready to release breakthrough. He said, but this revival that I've got, he said, it's not going to come through your hunger, Gentry. He said, it's going to come when they're hungry enough to do something about it. When they're hungry enough to do something about it. That's what apostolic is. It's when you will do something to get into the presence of God. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, tomorrow when I walk in here, I'm expecting the Lord to do something great. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to come and waste my time. Do you want to waste your time tomorrow? I think you do. I don't think you do. But what I feel like God wants to do uh, is God is about to put a hunger into your spirit uh, that you want to see the breakthrough happen. Uh, You want to see the breakout happen. Uh, You want to see the move of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Let me tell you, saying to God, uh, you've got the power that you can speak the word uh, and it will begin to happen. Uh, You can lay hands on the sick uh, and they shall recover. So what I feel to do tonight... I want you to stand to your feet all over the house. Why don't you lift up your hands and your voice? Come on, lift up your voice now. this in the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you this in the Holy Ghost. Before we cut this thing loose tonight. When the man that was bound to the bed wanted a miracle, he said, get me to where Jesus was. He made an effort to get to him. When the woman with the issue of blood wanted a miracle, she pushed through the crowd. She said, I'll do whatever I need to do. My granddaddy was one of the men involved in the Brush Harbor revivals down in Texas. He had a man that walked into the back one night and sat in the back row. The man was known to be the town drunk. The man came down to the front door an altar call. The Lord began to move, but a miracle hadn't happened. The man said, give me a moment as he went back to the back, stood on the back wall and started to do cartwheels from the front to the back. Slid down to the front, lifted up his hands, and the Lord began to fill him with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Alcoholism was taken off of him that night. My granddaddy looked at him. He said, sir, why did you do what you did? He said, sir, because the Lord sent me here tonight, and he told me he would do a miracle. He said, and if God's going to do his part, then i got to do my part. Yeah. He said, the Lord spoke to me that if I would do something that's different than I've ever done, that God would do a different miracle in my life. Let me tell you what I feel. There's some people in the house tonight that God has called you. God has told you that he wants to do a miracle. But you've been waiting on the right preacher to try to preach you out. Let me tell you something. I preach to you what the Lord told me to preach. Let me tell you, if you want to see the miracle happen, you'll dig the miracle out tonight. You'll worship until the miracle happens. You'll pray until you feel until you feel a miracle begin to happen in your life tonight. I'm gonna turn you loose. If you want to see a miracle, you begin to do something. If you want to see a breakthrough, you begin to do it. If you want to lay hands on somebody, you begin to lay hands. But I wish right now you begin to lift up your voice, extend your faith.